Hello there, and a very happy Saturday greeting to you wherever you may be this morning. I'm Pastor Bill Johnson of the First United Methodist Church in Orange, California, and I want to welcome you to another episode of We Are the Church. Friends, I'm going to read a couple of verses, well, actually quite a few verses from the uh, letter to Philemon in the New Testament. Philemon is only one chapter. It's, in fact, only 25 verses. It's a tiny little letter toward the end of our New Testament. But I'm going to be reading as Paul writes, I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love because of the hearts of the saints that have been refreshed through you, my brother. And for this reason... Though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do your duty, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. And I, Paul, do this as an old man and now also as a prisoner in Christ Jesus. I am appealing to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful both to you and to me. And I'm sending him that is, my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I preferred to do nothing without your consent in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you might receive, uh, have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. This is a remarkable little letter because it illustrates for us the... Uh, the very heart of what it means to belong to Christ, that we begin to order our lives after the fashion of Christ. And this is uh, the ordering of our lives with an inexpressible uh, and an inexhaustible love for the people around us. Onesimus, you see, was a slave who had run away. And he had come to be with Paul. And as he encountered Paul, he came to accept Christ Jesus. Now, Onesimus had been a slave belonging to Philemon, and as he had run away, he was no longer of any use to Philemon. But Paul knew Philemon and knew him as a brother in the Lord. And so because Onesimus had belonged to uh, Philemon as a slave, so Paul took him into service. But as he introduced him to the Lord, he became his father in Christ. Are you staying with me on this? This is a, a little triangle of relationships. And Paul convinced Onesimus to do the unthinkable, to return to the master whom he had, from whom he had run away. Uh, but in so doing, he returned no longer as a slave to him, but as a brother in the Lord. And Paul is now asking Philemon to show the same love for Onesimus that Paul has developed. To receive him back, and not in order to punish him or show him his way, but in order to receive a brother in the Lord, a brother in the flesh and a brother in the Lord, that Onesimus will be a willing servant um, for the rest of his life in the house of Philemon, if Philemon will have him back. And Onesimus knows this is the right thing to do, to not be on the run for the rest of his life, to make a full accounting of his own life. And so Paul uses words like duty and freedom and fatherhood and brotherhood and love, above all love. And he is saying to Philemon, now I could command you to do your duty, but I would rather see you rise to the level of love that Christ has shown for you. You see what a powerful thing is happening when the love of God is shed, is shed abroad in our hearts. We begin not only to connect to the Lord, but we connect to the people around us. And not just the people who can do good for us or who are winsome in our eyes, people who are lovely to look upon, but the people, even in some cases, the very people who have wronged us. Yes, Christ can restore us to a right relationship with him. That is how powerful the love of God is. 
So on this Saturday, as we are moving into Eastertide and celebrating the implications of the resurrection, I want to urge you to uh, trust the Holy Spirit and to trust the love of Christ. He can see you through any kind of disturbance in the relationships in your life. It can show you the right way to be with the people around you. And it can show you a capacity to love in your own heart that even you might have doubted. So just thought I'd share just a, a little brief section of this letter, Philemon, which is a remarkable letter. And it reminds us that uh, in Christ, slaves become our brothers. And this is how it should always be in our world. Let's pray. God, we thank you and we praise you that you are the one who can help us restore our relationships, that you can bind up the broken places, that because of the work of Christ on the cross, those broken places in our life can become places of witness and restoration and joy. And so, Lord, we ask that you pour that love of yours into our heart, that you give us the Holy Spirit so that we might live up to the good news of the gospel and live into it every day of our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful Saturday, friends. I will look forward to being with you online in worship tomorrow. And until then, remember to wash your hands, remember to read a psalm, remember to tell somebody today that you love them. And if they have wronged you and they're coming back to make good, welcome them as a brother or sister in the Lord. I'll talk to you soon.